everybody doing? So I, I did not know. I, you know, I didn't know what was going to happen until I got here. But so y'all are, we have some listeners here with us today. Is that what, that's what this is? Awesome. Well, thank you guys for that. And I uh, hope for y'all to be listening to, to one of my songs on this very soon, you know. Uh, my name's Adam Doliak. Anybody heard of me before you got here? Yeah? Couple? Three? Yeah? Okay. Never met, but um, you know, a lot of country songs are about girls and drinking and all kinds of general activities that everyone does. You knew that, right? Okay. Um, so this is, I like to call this, uh, it's, it's definitely the most personal song I've ever put out. And uh, always an interesting moment when you get personal with your fans and your listeners. But I think the best thing you can have in the whole entire world is a good mom and dad. And uh, I had a good mom and dad growing up, and I still do, and I surely wouldn't be up here right now without them. Uh, do we have any parents with us today? A couple of you? Yeah. Do we have any kids with us? If you didn't raise your hand, would you just see me after the show? I'd see, I won't like to talk about where you came from. Uh, um, but this is a song called Mom and Daddy's Money, and it makes most people giggle when they hear the title. Just to warn you, it's not a funny song. Um, but it's, I, I think you go a bunch of years through your teenage years and into your 20s, and if you're lucky enough to have good parents, you don't really realize how good your parents are until you grow up a little bit. And that was kind of the case for me, and I wrote this song about the time I figured that out, and it was just me figuring out that mom and daddy's money was not actually a $20 bill or paper money. It was just that they loved the hell out of me and would do literally anything to make life a little bit easier for me. And so... This is the only way I could figure to say thank you to them and that when I have my own kids one day that I hope I can do it as well as they did. So this is called Mom and Daddy's Money. So this next one is going to be uh, it's going to be my first single to radio. It's going to be adding on January 13th of 2020. So I'm very excited about that. Um, I put this song out earlier this year and it's just been a ironically the smallest little song I've ever put out, but it's just been opening doors for me that I've always wanted to open and we're finally getting to do some cool things. It's why I'm here today, and it may be why y'all raised your hand when I said, have you heard of me? So um, this is a little song called Famous, and uh, my uh, my girlfriend in Nashville, she's very tomboyish and wears a lot of workout clothes and doesn't get dressed up all that often. Um, so I see her every now and then dressed up, but my little brother was in town, and he really never sees her dressed up. And she came walking down the stairs. We were going out to dinner, and uh, he turned around, and she was wearing this, like, big white fluffy coat that was kind of bougie and a little bit extra than she normally is you know and so i we, we both kind of turned around and i hear my brother he goes dang you look famous tonight and uh i remember loving that idea just making somebody that is not per se famous feel like they are for three minutes and uh so i, I wrote that down i think i wrote it the next week um but that's where this song came from it's just a little idea of making somebody that's not famous feel like they are for a few minutes so this is it. If you know it, feel free to sing audibly where I can hear you, okay? Mm -hmm. No, actually, that's kind of a misperception of my story that it kind of, a lot of people tell it, uh, he got injured, so then he had to go find a new something to do, and he found music. I actually had already, I've been a drummer since my, I literally was two years old, so I'm just a huge music lover. I've always played it. I actually didn't start singing and writing songs until probably my junior year of college. Um, I've been quite random in my, in my thing. I had a full ride for golf my senior year of high school, and then my friends talked me into playing baseball for the first time on the day of the first game, my senior year of high school. So I, I hit a bucket of balls in the cage and started in the game that night, and that's how I started playing baseball. And so I thought it was for fun, and, I th and then all of a sudden, Southern Miss offered me a scholarship, and they were top 25 in the country, and I said, well, I can play golf until I'm 90 years old. I'm going to go play baseball. So I called that guy and said, no thanks on the full ride for golf. <laughs> I'm going to take a smaller scholarship for baseball. And then my roommates played guitar, and my teammates, about a lot of my teammates played. So I would just pick their guitar up when they'd leave the house. And they actually booked my first shows. I was scared to sing in front of anyone, so they went around town booking me shows so I'd have to show up. And I'd show up, and there'd be 600 people there, and they were all baseball fans, but they were just you know, there to see what was going to happen. And then so we kind of converted those into music fans, and this thing started happening. And I just fell in love with it. I, I could have gone and played professionally. Um, I got offers to do so, but I was ready to move to Nashville. I'm also not really happy with it doing something. If it's not this close to impossible, I'm kind of bored normally. So I figured I'd start a new career and, and move to Nashville. Um, 
but yeah, that that's uh, they, there's a lot. I think there's a reason you see that. There's a lot of similarities in baseball, especially Division One baseball, and and uh, music. You know, you're always around people and crowds, and your time management and performing and all that stuff. So it's the same kind of. You know, I got to play in the College World Series uh, three years after all that happened with baseball, and I walked in and there's thirty thousand people screaming at me. I'm like, well, this is a feeling I could get used to, you know, and I, I'm still kind of, you know, I'll never forget that, and I still am chasing that same feeling with, with this instead of a baseball bat now. So there's a lot of similarities, and it's been a, it's been a really cool thing that the, lead, the uh, leadoff hitter for the Dodgers this year used famous as his walkout all year, which was really cool, and I didn't know it, and I was at a game, and it started playing, and I'm like, oh, I like this song, you know. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's it's been a it's been a pretty a pretty cool and smooth transition. But I, to answer your question, I did what I wanted to do. Now I wasn't forced to, to one way or the other. But I'm glad I did this. There, there. People ask me all the time. They go, "What's the what's the difference in baseball minor leagues and music?" And I'm like, "Well, they're both minor leagues for sure, and they're both hard, and you have to work your butt off, and you may never make it. But in baseball, if you hit if you're in the minor leagues and you hit 45 home runs and 95 RBIs and you run a 6'6", they're going to call you up. Like, you're just going to go to the pros. In music, you know, there's probably somebody out there right now who's just better than everybody that no one's ever heard of and will never make it. You know, you just kind of have to, we just still got to work hard and you still got to you still got to be good, but you got to get lucky and the timing's got to be right. And so it's it's a little harder, you know, I think, in, in my opinion. But I'm, uh, I've never looked back from it. I haven't. I've never said, "Damn, I wish I'd have gone and played baseball." You know, so I'm, I'm having a blast doing this. Well, thank you. Yeah. Anybody else? <laughs> yes, Allie. Oh, next question. <laughs> Jameson was just here. So, so it, back before I ever played guitar. Before I ever played guitar or wrote a song, I, like I said, I was a drummer, and we had a band in college, and it was called Silky Smooth. <laughs> <laughs> Silky Smooth. It was. Now listen, you make fun of it because we were terrible. In fact, we were awful. We played three complete three shows lifetime. They all sold out. Every single one of them. We were all baseball players, and, and the S stands for smooth. You know. Uh, it was a f it was a it was a fun time and and so we were I wish I would pay thousands of dollars for a recording of one of those shows I really would because I know how bad we were and it would only sound worse listening back but so Jameson Rogers was the lead singer um, he moved to Nashville right after this so he moved it probably he's probably been there nine or ten years now he moved a few years before me and um, I was the drummer Jameson sang and then our our rhythm guitar player who was never in tune not once. His was Brian Dozier, who just won the World Series with the Nationals. So, and me and Jameson both have record deals. So the band may have sucked, but we've all, we've turned out okay. We had a random, uh, uh, some guy from a punk emo band playing bass for us. I'm not sure what happened to him. And then my, my older brother plays harmonica, and he was our lead guitar player with the harmonica. I would not step on stage without my older brother because we were that bad. He was the only one that was good at his craft, you know? So, anyway. That's going to follow me everywhere I go. I, they were, well, first of all, they were all covers. Every single one was a cover. We had no original songs. And then I remember, I mean, I didn't sing. I remember Jameson did uh, Gin and Juice. <laughs> <laughs> Next time he's here, you have to make him do that. Um, the only th it was kind of my introduction to singing though. I remember the one one time a night from while playing drums, I would sing or attempt to sing "Let's Get It On" from the drum set. I don't even know. It's been it's been nine, ten years now. That may be a nightmare. Let's try that later. I, I next time, next time. Jameson will sing "Gin and Juice," and I'll sing that next time. If we, I was about to say, if we're ever together, we should we could open up for ourselves with Silky Smooth. <laughs> we were idiots. There were no suits. But this is what we did. Most people make merchandise and sell it. 
you know, they sell it to the fans. We made merchandise for ourselves and wore it on stage. So we played in silky smooth shirts, and on the back, it had our, our position. So mine said drummer on the back. <laughs> it was bad. Everything about it was bad. But it was, it's good that we did it now because we can laugh about it. <laughs> Three dates. Yeah, lifetime tour. That's it. So I, play, I had played summer baseball with a guy named Jason Kipnis, who's the second baseman for the Cleveland Indians. Do y'all know him? Okay. He's the funniest guy I've ever come across, and I haven't seen him really since then. We played in the College World Series against each other. He was at Arizona State, and the whole summer he did like a persona of this Silky Smooth character. Like his answering machine on the phone, it would just be like, yes, this is Silky S. Johnson. Please leave a message at the beep. And he would do like all this funny voices stuff, and so I just kind of brought it back home to me, and that's where, the, that's where the band name came from. And unfortunately, I'm the business major of the group, so I, I named the band and did all the graphics, so I'll get made fun over that for that, too. <laughs> it's my fault as well. It's bad. It's just bad. There's no other way to say it. It's just bad. But it was good then. All right. Any other real questions? <laughs> questions that matter? All right. Well, I'm going to do uh, one more song for you. This was the first song I ever put out as an artist. Uh, it's called Whiskey's Fine. And uh, do you know that one or you just like whiskey? Oh, okay. Um, you want to sing the second verse? Damn it. I wasn't planning on it. Do you, would you like me to? Okay. Do we have time for another, or at least half of another? Maybe, okay, cool. Oh, okay, cool. <laughs> I'll do this one, and then I'll do like a verse chorus of Puzzle of Us or something, yeah. You know what I should have learned by now? I've, I've skipped, I haven't played that song maybe three times at live shows and stuff, and every time there's like 20 people after the show go, uh, why didn't you play Puzzle of Us? It's like legitimately mad. I'm like, all right, next thing won't happen again, sorry. I like to throw that, I mean, it sounds like it would be a song about whiskey, but it's just really not. That, I had a, to answer your question, there was a girl, I fell in love with this girl in like two days, okay? I met her on a Thursday, this was like, I mean, she left on Monday and I was just completely ruined by the time she left. I'm a hopeless romantic. And uh, so she had this thing, we, we kind of kept in touch back and forth and she was in and out of Nashville and she had a thing where, you know, some people send a text that say, like, you up or whatever. Or some, everybody has their little vice. She, her thing was she would text me at, she would text me and say, you hungry, at like 1.30 or 2 in the morning. And I always knew what it meant. And it actually meant she wanted to go eat. We would go to Waffle House. We, we would end up at Waffle House at like 2.30 in the morning, not sleep. And then, so this, this happened. On, this was a, probably a Monday or Tuesday night, something. She had done that. We went to Waffle House, stayed up all night. And we both had a write in the same building the next day. And so she wrote in to write with me. She went in this room to write. I went in this room to write. And I wrote that song. And she probably heard me writing the whole song. And then we listened to it on the way home. <laughs> so her name was Madison. Yeah. Strong, strong whiskey. Um. <coughs> Don't get me going. I've got stories for days. And they're all true. <laughs> I have to tell you the story behind this song, too, because it's really cool. It's uh, I was playing back in the day when I first started. I was playing 200 shows a year, and I would pretty much play anywhere they'd let me play. And I was playing at this biker bar somewhere in Alabama. And you talk about somebody not fitting in somewhere was me at this place. Okay, everybody had leather on, lots and lots of tattoos, and I'm up here, you know, spiked hair and singing love songs to these bikers. And... Uh, so I would take, we used to play for four hours back then, I was taking a break, and I was sitting next to this big biker dude, and he had sleeveless leather vest on, and his whole entire right arm was a puzzle that he had, it was like a tattoo puzzle, it was all put together, you could see every piece, and he didn't have one piece in his puzzle, and so I'm trying to find something to talk to this guy about, I'm like, hey, why'd you leave a piece of your puzzle out of your tattoo? And he goes, well, hold on a second, and I'll tell you, and... So I'm like, that's a weird answer, but okay. And so I wait two or three minutes, and she, a, a girl comes walking out of the bathroom, turned out to be his wife, also a biker chick, but not, not any tattoos. 
except she had one tattoo, and it was the piece that he didn't have. She had it in the same exact place he didn't have it on her. And so these bikers just inspired the hell out of me. And so I wrote this idea down on my phone, just something about puzzles. Uh, just, I love that idea. And um, I wrote this song. It took, it took, I wrote this with Anthony Smith, who wrote uh, like Run for George Strait and Cowboys Like Us and a bunch of those old songs. And uh, it was just me and him. And it took us eight hours, but we, we finally whittled it down. But this is called The Puzzle of Us. Thank you guys for hanging with me today and listening. My name's Adam Doliak. Thank you. <laughs>